It's great to be here. I appreciate it. I am Paul Lightfoot, the president and the founder of Bright Farms, which is a company that I began in 2011, just about to have my 10th year anniversary. Uh, we're growing and, and distributing local produce on a commercial scale and doing it with what we think are some of the nation's best retailers, trying to create the nation's first brand for national produce uh, of local, local, for national distribution of local produce. Uh, you know, Bright Farms follows a model that we go out and we build and operate uh, high-tech greenhouse farms. They're computer, computer controlled. They're highly automated. Each of our facilities costs about $12 million to build, and each is serving between 500 and 1,000 stores. So although it's commercial scale, we're also always trying to be local. Generally, we're growing food in the same community uh, where it's consumed, and, and, and our workforce would be members of the community where our produce is distributed. Uh, I'm going to show a really brief video so that our, our audience can see and hear what our facilities look like and what our people look and sound like. We are at Bright Farms. Bright Farms! So the most beautiful thing about Bright Farms is that we grow it, we harvest it, we pack it the same day and basically send it out that night. It's going to be in stores most of the time within 24 hours of harvest. So it's really going to be the freshest thing that you can get. And once you take it home, it's going to last the longest in your fridge. Our mission here at Bright Farms is to provide more people with the freshest, tastiest, most responsibly grown greens possible. And that's why we chose to grow local. Some of my favorite things are the people I work with every day. We have a great team that's really trying their best to produce really beautiful produce and produce that our customers will love. We're pesticide free, which is actually a step above organic. Many consumers don't know that organic can actually use organically certified pesticides. Plenty of nutrients and plenty of sunlight make a happy and healthy plant here at Bright Farms. As a father of three, I take pride in the Bright Farms brand because I can bring those greens home and know my family's having the safest, cleanest greens possible. One of the great things about local food is that you know your community, so I can meet my consumer and they know their farmer, they know where their food is coming from, and I think that that creates a lot more transparency and, and makes people feel really connected with their food and feel good about what they're eating. Terrific. I should also point out that we're a mission-driven organization. Our, our mission is to prong the health of the planet to improve the environmental footprint of a segment of the food supply chain and the health of Americans by getting them to eat more food that makes them feel better, uh, be healthier, and live longer. Uh, I'll, I'll talk briefly about the market opportunity that Bright Farms is uh, is attacking. Uh, I would I would imagine that nearly all of the people who watch this video will have eaten a salad in the last month. It's, uh, it's ubiquitous. Uh, salad, the salad business is a big business and it's super important to our food retailer partners. Generally speaking, it's the number one category um, for sales in, in produce departments of supermarkets, but it's also the number one category for profits. Great food retailers can't win without great salad programs. And we've got what we think is a program that works great uh, for retailers. Here's some of the benefits, we were on that slide. Some of the benefits that retailers think about are that the product is simply better. You know, we're generally replacing long distance produce from either California or, uh, no offense to you Arizonans, uh, or Arizona, and we're replacing it with produce that's grown, you know, generally when you think about the, uh, the transportation and the processing facilities and the middlemen, about a week fresher, which makes it uh, longer shelf life, makes it look better, smell better, taste better and just frankly, be better. We also lift category sales. I'll talk about that specifically in a moment. We ship consistently on a year round basis and our product is safer. When the long distance field grown salads uh, have recalls or other problems due to their quality or safety, we keep showing up on time and meeting the needs of our, of our retailers and consumers. So here's a bit about what I meant about category lift. This is real data from a pilot we did with one of the largest retailers in the country. It was a nine month pilot. After we entered the category with Bright Farms products, dollar sales rose about 36% within a matter of weeks. And then they stayed at this higher level permanently. So the retailer is getting more sales from the same shelf space. Uh, they would have been happy with the five or 10% uh, category lift. Uh, the 36% was really a home run. And, uh, and, and really all of our major retailers are planning expansion, expansions with us, which includes partners like Walmart, um, Kroger, and Allhold, Del Hayes. 
uh, I'll, I'll sort of wrap this up and, and get to the questions that you shared with me to talk about our growth. We have been growing powerfully and steadily for years. We're now growing exponentially. Um, you can see in here the number of stores that, that, that we're in right now. At the beginning of last year, it was less than 900. And, uh, and right now we're, you know, we're, we're cranking past 2000. And, and frankly, we're on our way, certainly in 21, to eclipse 3000. Um, you know, the, the, the pandemic that the country has, has been managing this year uh, has been tragic in a lot of ways. But it's increased demand at retail, retail, which is where we're focused, and it's increased demand for wholesome, fresh, healthy food with a decentralized and resilient supply chain, which is Bright Farms. So our, our business has definitely uh, been stronger uh, during this period. Uh, I'll conclude it by saying that you know Bright Farms is in what we think is a, a large, super exciting and dynamic market opportunity. We're in a leadership position. You know, the category is growing fast. We're the number one player in it. We, we think we have the best investors in the world behind us. We actually announced uh, uh, yesterday that we raised another $100 million this year in, in financing, with most of that coming from Cox Enterprise, which is now our majority um, owner. And, um, and we've now raised in total about $200 million, which is all going to be used to, fan, to fund uh, our continued expansion. And we feel like we've got real structural advantage in the world in terms of our product being fresher, in terms of our, our environmental footprint benefits to the, to the planet and profitability advantages as well. You guys, shall I ask those questions now uh, directly from my notes or do you wanna pose them? Yeah, I can just go ahead and answer or ask you the question. Yeah. Um, so what inspired you to go into your field? Yeah. So for me, it was it was quite easy. You know, I had a background in, in running a company that improved the supply chains of retailers. And I'd really done that through my 30s. I started this company when I was 40. And uh, and during that period, I'd, I'd increasingly grown zealous about the way I fed myself and my family early to organic food, early to local food, early to a mostly plant based diet. And I, and I really wanted to have a way to combine my professional background with my personal passion. Uh, there, you know, there weren't people offering me jobs to work at places like Bright Farms at the time. So I, I, I decided to essentially just make it up, right? So there wasn't a, uh, there wasn't any sort of a logical transition. I had an idea. I thought I had the capacity to execute it well, and I just decided to do it. Uh, a, a small side story is that when I, when I brought the idea home to, uh, to my wife for what I'm doing now, she initially said no, uh, but I convinced her to change her mind, and now she's happy that I did that. Awesome. Um, what's a piece of advice you'd give to a college student looking to go into a similar field? Well, I'd say in any field, my first advice is like, you know, find something fun, right? If you're going to work on stuff that you find interesting, you'll find your work interesting and vice versa. So, you know, you may as well choose something that's interesting. So much of your, of your weekly hours we spent working, you may as well do it in something that's fun. And beyond that, I would say pick people that you have confidence will mentor you, um, that they'll teach you things, and your rate of acceleration and improvement will dramatically better than otherwise. And then pick people that you want to be with, right? You spend a lot of time with people. And if again, if they're fun and interesting and, and challenge you and, and have authenticity and meaning, you'll find that your life has more authenticity and meaning. And I think if you get, if you get all those things, no matter what field you're in, everything else will turn out pretty good. Yeah, that's great. Um, what would you look for in a job candidate? So as people get into more senior roles, the skills and experience become super important. For uh, younger people, like you guys, people coming out of college, it's less important. But what I do look for is sort of a genuine interest in the subject matter. So if, uh, if someone applies to Bright Farms and says, ah, oh, God, I love sustainable agriculture. I generally want to see that somehow in their track record, either in their summer jobs or in their hobbies or things that they've written or otherwise been involved with. Um, you know, and, and if they haven't, then it's hard for me to judge whether their interest is, is, is genuine or passionate or not. So I'd say before you go telling the story, you know, get some sort of a track record in your story. What skills have you found to be especially important throughout your career? 
Yeah. So I'll say this is a, a personal question. There's lots of different skill sets that can succeed in the world. Uh, there's people that succeed with charisma and people who succeed without it. You know, it, it, you don't have to have one or the other. For me personally, you know, I think having a growth mindset has really benefited me. I've had three, I've, I've run three companies, uh, two of them for almost 10 years each, and they were totally different in every way. So I've got an ability to learn things. You know, I, I'm 50 this year and I, I picked up, you know, being really good at ping pong and mountain biking. You know, like I, I'm, I'm just constantly trying to learn, learn new things. I'm doing the best skiing of my life right now. I am severely not stubborn. So I may have a great idea. I sometimes do have great ideas, but the moment something comes along that shows me a better idea, I will drop my old idea. And that has really served me well. Um, I'd also say that I do a good job of seeing the big picture in the, in the details of things, right? And it's hard sometimes to slip, switch back and forth, but throughout my career, I've found that I can keep in mind the big picture and the big strategies, you know, when I'm on the ground and, and in the field. And I think the last thing that has really served me well is that people believe me and trust me. And I think partly it's because I've got a track record of doing what I say that I'm going to do. But I also generally think I stick to talking about things that I'm, I'm genuinely passionate about. And uh, I, I can't exactly pin down why that works, but I know that it has from selling to customers, from raising capital, from hiring employees. Uh, if you get people to trust you, uh, everything else is a whole lot easier and vice versa. Yeah, and lastly, what is the most rewarding aspect of your profession? Of my profession. So, you know, for me, I mentioned I care a lot about food and healthy and sustainable food. Now, I think everybody in the world cares about food. It's part of the fabric of all of our lives. But since I care about it a lot and I care about getting people to eat healthy and to eat food that's more sustainable, to do that, you know, all day, all week, is, is it, it's just terrific for me. I, I really like that. And I think the other is, is I'm surrounded by people that I really love working with. I mean, that, that I love, period, actually. You know, I, I've the senior management team at this company, you know, I personally picked over the years, talked them into leaving promising careers to join our, our journey and, and the exciting path that we're on. And I've got a, you know, a genuine amount of, of, of affection for them and obviously a lot of respect. We have suffered together, we've celebrated together. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the kind of relationship you have with people uh, like that only comes from those life experiences. And at this point, it's a, it's a terrific experience. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I think that's it, unless um, you have any questions or Sam has anything. So have anything? I have a few questions just about Bright Farms. Um, so are you guys only located in California right now? Or are you guys expanded in other states? We're not located at all in California, Sam. We are in oh. Ill <laughs> Illinois. We're in California. No, we're, we're putting California out of business. We're in Illinois, Virginia, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and we're constructing and will soon open in North Carolina. We will get to California, I think, at some point. That is, however, where the in incumbent industry is based, right? So we wanted to start uh, a bit far away from them because it gave us a bit of a competitive edge. Awesome. And then do you guys only do leafy greens right now? We do only do leafy greens right now. That's not to say we will always only do leafy greens. There's some pretty exciting other categories that we think, you know, when we think about where to go next, we think about it in the lens of like, can we make money? Um, and then is growing in a controlled environment on a local basis, some sort of a competitive advantage. So if you're talking about, you know, sweet corn or grains or apples, all of which can be stored and transported cheaply, then I don't think we'd get, we'd get a competitive edge. But if I think about maybe strawberries or cucumbers, there are other categories that I think our way of producing would be a competitive edge. And we will eventually move our way into those spaces, probably through acquisitions instead of developing things from the ground up. Um, but for now, we are laser focused on, on, on leafy greens. We think it's a, a multi-billion dollar market opportunity. It's really hard to do new things. So I try not to do more than one new thing at a time. Mm -hmm. And when, when, you know, and as the insurgent in a marketplace, you have to be concentrated in your forces. The bigger players can afford to spread their forces. We can't. So check back in, in in three or five years and I'll let you know if we're looking to go beyond our current footprint, but for now it's, it's, it's blinders on, lasers are focused.
Okay. Well, that's all the questions I had. That's really cool. Um, this idea and I'm glad that it really took off and it's like helping people out. I appreciate that, Sam. Me too. Uh, but we're, we're still, we, I'm knocking on wood. We got a long way to go still. We're just getting started. 10 years in and another 100 to go. <laughs>